Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at finding subsets of a given set. So first, let's just review the definitions. A subset of a given set is a set in which all of its elements are also elements of the given set. There's also proper subsets, and a proper subset of a given set is a subset of the given set and the given set has at least one element that's not in the subset. It's a lot. A lot of the word set there, right? Okay, so logicians are interested in finding all possible subsets of a given set. Let's look at set A, which for now, A is going to be the set containing the elements 3 and 4. How many subsets can you find for A? Go ahead, try it. Okay, what'd you come up with? So first, you might recall from the previous video that the null set is always a subset. So we're going to start with the null set. And then what else is there? Well, there's the set that just contains the number 3. The set that just contains the element 4. And because it's a subset, it can be the set itself. So we always want to include the null set and the set itself. So I found four subsets. And then how many proper subsets do we see? I see three proper subsets, right? These are the three proper subsets. This one is just a subset. Three proper subsets. Okay. And so now we're going to just apply this. We're going to make a huge generalization, which is always a big no-no, but we can use inductive reasoning here and draw a conclusion about how many subsets a set will have which contains two elements. So if we have two elements, which we could call A and B, or three and four, or one and two, or whatever you want, we're always going to have the empty set. That's always going to be one. We're always going to have a set containing the first element. We'll always have a set containing the second element, and we'll always have a set containing both elements. So any set containing two elements will always have four subsets, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'm going to do that so it doesn't look like that's one of them. It's always going to have four subsets, right? Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to look at others now to see if there's a relationship because this was two elements has four subsets. So what do we think is going to happen if we have three elements or four elements? Let's try that now. So go ahead now, pause the video and see if you can find all the possible subsets for a set containing three elements and all the proper, sorry, not proper subsets, possible subsets for all of the uh, sets containing four elements. Did you really pause the video? Okay, good. Let's try this out. So first we're going to include our null set. I don't know why it looks weird. Oh, sad day. Sometimes this thing just goes wonky on me. Okay, so I'll do it over here. Much better. Okay, we have our empty set. Next, I'm going to do just a row or a column containing just one element. So we have N, Q, and R. Now, this one's going to be the ones containing two elements. So I can have N and R. I can have N. I don't know why I skipped N and Q, but I did. And we could have Q and R. And then we could have one set containing all three. So we have N, Q, R. And again, just like with the... Uh, set containing two elements, we're going to use inductive reasoning here to assume that this is going to be true for any set containing three elements. How many do we have? We have one, three, three, one. That would be eight. So when we have three elements, oh yeah, I forgot I couldn't write over there. That's going to be eight subsets. And how many proper subsets would we have? These would be our proper subsets, so there would be seven proper subsets. Okay, and then what about when we have four elements. Well, we have our empty set. We have four sets that contain one element each. So we have one, four. Now we need two, two elements that is. So we have S, T. We could do S, U, S, V. And we don't want to do TS because TS already exists here. It's the same as ST. So we don't do TS. We'll do TU, TV, and lastly, UV. So how many sets containing two elements? We have, whoops, I don't know why I'm writing two. Probably because I just said it. We have six. Okay, what about subsets containing three elements? Well, we could have... Now what we can do, you can think about the one and the three as kind of like opposites of each other or complements of each other. So this one contains one element and contains S. What's it missing? It's missing T, U, and V. 
This is a nice way to keep track so we don't double count and we don't forget any um, sets containing three because containing three could be a little bit tricky. Here we had the set containing T, so we're missing from that set T, uh, S, U, V. The set containing U does not use S, T, or V. And the set containing V does not use S, T, or U. So it looks like if we have three elements, there will be four subsets. And then lastly, we have the set itself. That would be S, T, U, V. So we have 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1. That's 10 plus 6. There are 16 subsets when there are four elements. And if we're curious, we can cut out one of those, right? Because And that would be the number of proper subsets. So there'd be 15 proper subsets. This is a lot of work. I don't want to have to sit here. I mean, what if there's 11 elements in a set? That's going to be way too much. I'm not going to be able to have time for that. I'm not going to sit there and list them all out. That's no. So what's the relationship here? When we had, I think I actually have it on the next page. So I'm going to go to the next page. Oh, okay, good. Is there a formula that we can find? So we're going to look at the number of elements and the number of subsets. And then we're going to also just compare the number of proper subsets. I'm just going to write proper due to laziness. Okay, so when we have, we'll look at one. I didn't look at one before, but, but let's just see if we can figure that out. So if we have one element, let's say we have A, how many subsets would there be? There would be two subsets, the null set and the set itself. So when we have one element, there are two subsets. How many proper subsets? There would only be one, just that null set. When we had two elements, we had four subsets and we had three proper subsets. When we had three elements, we had eight subsets and we had seven proper subsets. When we had four elements, we had 16 subsets or and 15 proper subsets. So look at this. This is nice. This is a doubling pattern. Or maybe that's not going to be super great because doubling is not really a formula. But how do we get from 1 to 2 and 2 to 4 and 3 to 8 and 4 to 16? Well, if these are the powers of 2, that's how we would get those. So we could say the number of subsets is going to be given by 2 to the n, where n is the cardinal number of the set. So remember the cardinal number, that's the number of elements in the set, is the cardinal number of the set. So when I say the number of elements, that's the same thing as the cardinal number. So 2 to the n would tell us the number of subsets. Now how would we determine the number of proper subsets? Well, the number of proper subsets is always one fewer than the number of subsets itself. So the number of proper subsets, I can't, there we go. We would take that 2 to the n, and then we're going to take away 1 from it. And we want to be really careful here. I have students who get this confused all the time. You need to do 2 to the n first, and then you're just taking away 1 from it. Don't do 2 to the n minus 1, where n minus 1 is your exponent, because that's not going to give you the right number. You're going to, you're going to short the number of proper subsets. So you do 2 to the n first, then take away 1. Okay, so now we can, we can figure this out. How many subsets would the following sets have? And we're not going to list these all out. Please don't. Please don't. But pause the video, see if you can figure out how many subsets this particular set would have. Okay, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would say the cardinal number of the set is eight. So the number of subsets would be two to the n, which in this case is two to the eight, and two to the eight is 256. How many proper subsets would the following set have? We have A, E, I, O, U, Y. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, n is six, and this is proper subsets. That's two to the n, and then we take away one from this result. So two to the sixth minus one, two to the sixth is 64, and then minus one is 63. So there'd be 63 proper subsets, right? Because it's all of the subsets except for the set itself. We're just taking that one and removing it. Lastly, how many proper subsets would set H have given that the cardinal number of H is 11? So this would be two to the 11th, right? And proper subsets, so we're going to take away one. And I don't have my calculator, so let's see. Two to the ninth would be 512. Then we would have 1024. It must be 2048. 
So 2 to the 11th, hopefully, is 2048 minus 1, which would be 2047. Good thing we're not listing those out because that would just be a huge investment of our time. Okay, so we're going to put together all of the things from the previous few videos to make sure we, we got this. We have this down pat. So given the universe is x such that x is a natural number and x is less than 10, we have set A, which is in the universe, defined by the elements 1, 2, and 3, and B contains the elements 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So first we're going to draw a Venn diagram. Now, A is not a subset of B, nor B is a subset of A, so we're going to give them, the, and they do have an overlap, so we will overlap them, and we have A, B. Okay, we're going to start with the overlap of A and B, that would be 3. So we have 3. Now set A also has 1 and 2. And set B has 4, 5, 6, and 7. And set the universe also has 8 and 9. So we're going to put 8 and 9 in the universe, but not within either set A or set B. List the proper subsets of A, the proper subsets. Okay, we're listing them. So we're going to say the null set, the sets containing one element each, the sets containing two elements each. And again, what you can do here is the one and the two are kind of like complements of each other. So here's the set containing one, it's missing two and three. The set containing two is missing one and three, and the set containing three is missing one and two. Just a way to keep it handy. You obviously don't have to do that. And that's it. Now, should there be seven sets? That would be two to the third minus one. That would be eight minus one. Yes, there should be seven sets. So I feel pretty good that we have the complete list here without any extras or, and we don't, we're not missing any. How many subsets does B have? So it's not asking us to list it. It's just saying, how many does it have? B contains five elements. So the cardinality of B is five. That would be two to the fifth. It's asking for subsets. So it's two to the fifth, which is 32. So we'd have 32 subsets. How many proper subsets does B have? That would be 32 minus one which would be 31. Find the complement of A, so that's everything that's in the universe not contained in set A. So the complement of A, we'll say A complement. And so we're gonna not look at these. We're gonna ignore those, and we would have four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we're gonna fill in the blanks using the correct notation. So one is an element. Is one an element of A? Yes, it is. So we would say one is an element. Remember that symbol? That's going back a few videos. One is an element of A. And then B, so B is a set and A is a set. So the only comparison we can make here is, is it a subset or is it not a subset? B is not a subset of A. So we're going to say not a subset. This has been looking at finding the number of subsets and then kind of a general review. Thank you for stopping by.